Uh, so plan for today, uh, I'm going to put uh, wing tip and tail looking at this left wing, yep. or right wing. Yep. And then uh, it's all focused on this wing area. Right? Correct, correct. And here's the thingy. So the thingy is the, uh, the magical part of uh, this whole test flight. So I think I'm able to see it. Sorry, do that again. Yeah. So when, when it starts separating, right, when it starts working, it's going to go up here. I think. So, so it's going to hit all these tufts. Okay, so we don't need more tufts. No, I don't think so. I think it's going to be good. Do you have a name for that? Call it the vein? When he's motioning with his hand, that's the, where the vortex would lay, right in the wing body fillet. We're taking high energy air and mixing it with the energy that's stalling out or losing energy right at the surface and trying to keep that uh, boundary layer attached. I couldn't find anything that said what Sears no, called it. I saw a few articles and I don't know. There was a lot of like great press around it, you know, yeah. uh, them being excited. <laughs> Cirrus calls it a uh, fuselage vortex generator. Yeah, I don't know. I would call it a stall vein. So how did you set the incidents on it? Obviously that's critical. <clears throat> right, so uh, I did the CFD, cruise conditions. Uh, so I got all the streamlines, the oil flow, figured out where that was, measured it, uh, and uh, designed it and put it in there, ran it in the CFD, and it lined up with the streamlines within 0.2 of degree, something like that for cruise. Cruise, I used zero degree AOA. So, so the question he was answering there was how he picked the incidents of the part in CFD. You can see him talking about uh, how he located it in CFD, and then he's checking uh, with the aircraft at a given AOA what the local flow is doing uh, you know, because it has to go around the wing, etc. My question was about uh, once he had the answer where he wanted it to be, how did he install it on the airplane? Uh, okay, so CFD told you what angle to put it at. Yes. How did you know what, how to put it at that angle on the airplane? So that moment was interesting for two reasons. The first is that being an engineer, uh, my question, which was a, a practical application question of how did you install it? He's an engineer used to talking about analysis. So he answered the question talking about how he did the analysis. The second reason is interesting. I think CFD has a lot of voodoo around it. People assume that if you, you know if you have a good CFD model, you've got everything. And what we just pointed out was that uh, assuming his model is correct, uh, there's still the question mark of what is the AOA uh, for a given condition, right? So if you um, think your AOA is six and it turns out to be five and a half, in the case of the stall vein, it doesn't matter. But in the case of some other stuff, it may matter. And so uh, uh, there's the, the joke with the, any um, computer-based analytical tool is that uh, it will always give you a pretty picture. CFD is no different. It'll always give you a pretty picture. But whether or not you can believe it is a separate thing. And I think that that's some of the most interesting work in flight tests and why this project gets me so excited is because we have the, the both the practical side where we're making stuff and sticking it to airplanes. On the other side, we have we have to go back to actual analytical tools and you know figure out what what we wanted to happen. From the leading edge, where is that point, for instance? Right? Okay, as far as forward yeah. of the leading edge. And also found this point here where the uh, the fillet starts, for instance. Okay. And I measured it vertically to come up with whatever the vertical point is here. Yeah. And then I did the same thing coming, uh, and then I measured the angle here, which is always zero. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. So that's and a then, good reference. And then I put my, my leveler on this one, rotated that one to the same degree, and then made a pilot holes, clicked it in place, and then, uh, you know, drilled it and so forth. Did the same thing on the other side. And it's installed right now with Pop, Popovitz? No, no. It, oh, it, wow, cool. Dead, cool. Dead. And then, um, Yes, and then I did the, uh, the CFD with, uh, I think it was 13 and 14 degrees AOA to see where it ended up. You know, nice vortex lined up all over the fillet and cleaned up the area back there. So here's some screenshots of the analysis that Hawkins talked about. You can actually see the vortex uh, in CFD laying right there in the wing body fillet. And then my uh, other CFD friend did the same thing with uh, certain AOAs and whatnot, different software, all that kind of stuff, but he verified that the uh, uh, the same thing that, that I came up with. So now it's just the proof is in the pudding, right? So we'll see if it actually works. <laughs> okay, so, and then global picture. So the, uh, you want it to shed a vortex that's gonna clean up uh, or reattach that area there at the wing root? Yes. Doing the same work that was previously done with those big VGs we had there exactly. for flight so the, the, seven the, and eight. The big VGs we had before, they were located here. Those VGs are extensively covered in the videos for flights seven and eight. Uh, feel free to go back and check those. Right before the, uh, the uh, yep. things here. Yep. And I also had four of them back here. Those we removed 
and these are removed. So hopefully it will do the same thing. It's all about keeping this area here attached, but you know, with the vorticity just to keep the boundary layer you know, lined up here. So, so they move the stall outboard. So there's the VGs that uh, we are talking about on flight seven and eight. Those were actually made out of a piece of L extrusion that uh, uh, Hawken found at Home Depot and then hand cut out himself. Uh, just uh, used double-sided sticky tape to stick them on. Uh, but again, that's all covered in flight seven and eight. And you said your friend did some of the CFD. What's his name and how well, do you know he, him? He, he, his name is Lernat Wish. I worked together with him at uh, Piper. I've known him for over 20 years. And he volunteered to do that too, and uh, so far that looks really good. And uh, so we'll see. Keep fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, because the other good things with that one is that it doesn't create any drag in cruise right. since it's lined up with the uh, um, with the streamlines and all that kind of stuff. And he estimated it was like one or two drag counts of drag, which was like less than one percent of total drag. For the aircraft which is basically negligible you know so if that works so much better than the vgs because Way they better. will create cruise regardless right or create drag they're, with, they're doing the same thing regardless of angle yeah, attack exactly. yeah. okay before we move on from that topic let's just do a quick recap on how the uh fuselage vortex generator or the stall vane works. So fundamentally, it's very similar to a vortex generator, right? Where the idea is we're just trying to mix the air, right? So the, that boundary layer air, as it goes across the top of the wing and moves further and further back, it uh, starts to lose energy, right? And as it loses, ener loses energy, it gets more and more likely that it'll tumble. When it tumbles, that separation is what begins the process of creating a stall. So a vortex generator is just like a little finger that reaches up and grabs, you know, reaches up through the low energy area right above the, uh, the surface is that low energy boundary layer and up into the high energy area above and grabs it in, brings it down and mixes it with the low energy air right on the surface. The problem with the vortex generator is that, uh, you know, these little blades that are, you know, if we're going this way, these little blades that are mounted into the, in the free stream is that no matter how fast you're going, they're always there creating turbulence. They're always there doing that mixing and that mixing takes energy and that energy is drag. It slows the airplane down in the cruise phase. The difference with the stall vane or the fuselage vortex generator is that while at high angles of attack, it has that, uh, that angle of incidence that creates the vortex and protects the wing downstream. In cruise, it's fared into the free stream, right? Which means the only drag is just the, the surface friction of, uh, of a very small, you know, this big piece of uh, material sitting in the breeze. And that's the advantage. And the other thing I did, I removed half of the VGs for the aileron, also to reduce the overall drag, right? So before it was, one this way, one that oh, way. Oh, got it, okay. So, so I removed the, uh, the first one of the pair for each one of them. And I took the inboard one that was here, put it out here. Okay, cool. And, and the reason for that is that when the flaps are down, your flow goes more like in. It gets sucked into the low pressure uh, area of the flaps, right? Okay. So that one really wasn't needed because that one already... It's being sucked away there. inboard, yeah. Yeah, so put it here so we're going to get a little bit better control. So here are some screenshots of that CFD showing uh, where the uh, vortexes from those VGs in front of the aileron end up. And just like Hawkins talking about, you can see they get sucked way inboard by the low pressure uh, from the flap and uh, explains uh, what he's talking about. Uh, looking at the video from eight, uh, I finished the video last night. I had the stalls, I didn't quite get them out, yeah. uh, but uh, there's a lot more lateral directional stuff uh, on eight than seven. Okay. So I think that's, remember the big thing was we just I think, I don't know anything, but the, it seemed like we, the biggest thing would have been we pulled those last, was it four? Yeah. And it, uh, I didn't think they would have as much effect as they did. Now, it could obviously just be something different I was doing, but it, the, the, there was way more wing, wing drop at... Uh, really? Well, uh, we can always add more, you know? This is, this yeah. is the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is what makes so it cool. I think, I think it went all the way up to here somewhere. I believe so, so yeah. So two more pairs, if you count the pairs, right? And... I don't mind adding a few more out there because that's that's minor drag and if it really really helps the lateral control then uh, definitely we can do that definitely let's just uh, yeah it's always a trade-off between what's acceptable lateral handling yes in the stall and exactly. how fast you want to go right exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, right on and then uh, let's see uh, engine wise uh, I replaced the gas intake gaskets for two three and four Leveled as much as I could for the receptacles and the tubes. 
and uh, clean up the, the interface and all kind of stuff, put them in. So hopefully the engine will run a little bit better. Okay. As you mentioned, it was running rough and EDTs were a little bit scattered or whatever. So it goes without saying that uh, the engine uh, performance stuff is important because uh, you know we, we did all this stuff to improve the stalls and the airplane slowed down and now we're trying to prove or make the airplane go faster. And so if there's missing horsepower, that would explain uh, uh, the problems we're having with cruise speed. And uh, the other thing I looked at was the um, carb heat valve. So when I looked at that, it was kind of stucky, you know, and uh -huh. it really didn't open and close properly. Uh -huh. So I don't know, it really has any influence to it, but one thing could happen is that you get too rich of a mixture and it might you know, mess up the end in something. It might also lose some manifold pressure. I'm not so sure about that, but it might be a possibility. So, uh, so I fixed that, took the whole thing out, cleaned it, straightened the, the little wire and bolted it up and made sure that it hits the, the, the end points and closes properly. And uh, the other thing I did, if you look at this, I removed the center throttle from the console. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it wasn't too bad actually. What I did, I put in a new push pull. Yep. That one. And uh, I, did, I connected them now, so now both works. Okay. So, and uh, they, they hit the stops. And uh, we talked about high idle before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first time I ran it, it ran good. And then Second time I ran it, it was like 960, and I thought it was too much because uh, I taxied to the, uh, the the fuel pit, and I had to you know go on the brakes all the time. You know? yeah, yeah. So didn't want to do that. So cowling off again, adjusted the idle. Uh, cold, it was running at 600, something like that. So I expected a warm, probably about 750, 800. So that should be good. So um, that's probably good, and then. The little bar that I had in the nose gear well to hold the cables in place, mm -hmm. I removed that one. So hopefully now you won't have any problems when the nose gear goes in and hitting any of the engine controls. You probably won't see any okay. movement there, which, you know. So, so if there was a loss of manifold pressure during the cruise points on the last flight, uh, well, hopefully it was that. from that bar and that should be fixed. Yeah. And if we can't get the manifold pressure that we expect, then we need to figure out why that is. Because the numbers we had last time, was it 19 and a half yeah. at 8,900 density altitude? That's way too low. It should be up in the, I would say, 22 range. At yeah, 22 least. is atmospheric pressure, so. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so you expect more. So we'll, we'll see what goes on with that. But that would explain why we <clears throat> didn't see the speeds that we expected, because that's more like, what, 55% power or something right. like that, right? So, we'll figure that out. Then I also replaced the... Uh, Charging the, cable. Yes. I had, I had to try out three of them. Really? Yes. And then I had to Google and I had to go talk to the avionics guys and you know, ask about the problem. And it, it's an obvious problem from, because many, many people have it, right? Hmm. So you have to buy the higher end units. The cables. Uh, yeah, no, not the cables, the, the little uh, chart, the um, cigarette adapter oh. itself. Huh. Because the, the lower end, they're not built properly and whatever, they cost static. So I got one that was recommended, put that in, and uh, so now we don't have any problem with that. Cool. And I also replaced the cable that was a little bit frayed yep. last time. So that's a new cable. So uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it there. So hopefully we have you know, taking care of the, the, the known issues that we had last time, and uh, then we'll just try it out again. Cool. Go ahead. This one here. So you can see the blue streak from the gas, right? Sure, yeah. So what I think happened was that the valve, the interface leaked, and it got sucked in here, where the split is for the wings, and then drawn up to the top side. And that was always the big issue. Why is it leaking on the top side or is weeping on the top side? I right. couldn't figure it out. And, uh, and, and started looking at it because there was no apparent leak from the tank. And it was not a leak, it was just you know, a weep of some sort. So what I think happened was that the, uh, the, uh, the drain valve leaked between the valve and the wing. 
and then it just slowly seeped and came up on the surface. So I drained the tanks, pulled it out, cleaned it up, and uh, you know did whatever stuff to clean that. And it is a tapered thread, thread by the way, but still that obviously didn't help. So I put an O-ring in there and uh, uh, some uh, thread sealant, uh, fuel safe thread sealant, cleaned it, put it up, filled the tanks, and that was, I would say three, four, five days ago, and it's still dry, so. That's a huge difference. Yes, so I'm hoping that was the issue because I really don't want to take the wing off. <laughs> <laughs> So I have all the material, all the cores, all the parts for the new trim pad. Oh, cool. Yes. So we're going to start working on that video tonight or tomorrow. So I just outlined the size of it. Oh, cool. It's going to be this big. I want to wow. make it big enough because if it's big, I don't need a lot of deflection of the tab, right? Oh, sure, so sure, sure. I'm going to install the tab and whatever, you know. So, uh, yeah. So obviously I have to go in and Cut this out, clean it up. <clears throat> Had to build a little new web yep. on the inside here, and uh, yeah, and then build the, the tab itself. So uh, got the core cut by the, by the company up in uh, San Francisco. Got that. Had the design laid out. Already cut the um, had the kits for the, uh, the carbon fiber done, and uh, so it's just a matter of get going with that. What's the company in San Francisco? Foam links. Foam links. Yeah. And they they do uh, hot wiring, CNC hot wiring. They do uh, hot wire, CNC, three axis, five axis. <laughs> they work for the, you know, any type of industry that needs some foam. They also also cut the uh, molds for the uh, fillets. Okay. Yeah. Cool. For the uh, CNC stuff. And they're good pricing and all that. They, they're reasonable. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Well, so I've been uh, talking to Dynon and all that kind of stuff, and trying to figure out uh, how to do the new panel and. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be, you know, going to take all that thing out. But it's going to be a, a um, two 10-inch displays, and then the I'm still going to have the iPad as a backup, and uh, then I'm going to have uh, the Garmin GNS 355 as my as my GPS was for uh, IFR approaches and stuff like that. I'm going to keep the audio panel. We're going to keep the uh, the ICOM 220 radio. Okay. And then I'm going to make a new uh, center console kind of thing, probably carbon fiber. Cool. And uh, the panel is going to be angled in such a way that it's more or less always facing the pilot. Cool. So it's there a little bit like that. And then uh, probably going to have the VPX Pro uh, electronic yeah. circuit breakers. Cool. Stuff make it clean yeah so i did all that stuff in cad uh, laid it out measured the cockpit and everything so i know everything works and uh yeah so it's time to start ordering parts oh boy <laughs> watch out <laughs> yeah.